Let's look at dividing decimals by a whole number. It might help us to start with a money problem, and if we had $4.75 and we wanted to divide it amongst five friends, how much would we give each friend? The solution here would be the answer to that word problem that I just gave you. Five can't go into four, but five can go into 47. Five goes into 47 nine times. Nine times five is 45. 47 minus 45 is two, and I bring down the five. 25 divided by five is five, because five times five is 25. And 25 minus 25 is zero. Now, if I gave each of the friends 95 and $95, hmm, would I have enough to give five of them that amount? No, I would not, because $95 is a lot more than $4.75. My decimal point actually goes right there for 95 cents. And when we're writing 95 cents, I like to write it this way so I know that I don't have any dollars there. So, so if I gave them each about a dollar, one, two, three, four, five dollars, yeah, that's very close to four dollars and seventy-five cents. My answer is reasonable. Here I have 3.6 and three and six tenths, and I'm dividing it by two. Two goes into three one whole time. One times two is two, and three minus two is one. I bring down the 6. 16 divided by 2 is 8, because 8 times 2 is 16. I'm ignoring the decimal point for now. 16 minus 16 is 0. At this point, I have to go ahead and look. I have one decimal point here, and so that tells me to go ahead and one decimal point within our number. There's no decimal points here, because this is a whole number. That would actually have another effect on our answer as to where we put our decimal point, and that's something that we will learn in a future lesson. So my decimal point here goes right there. One decimal point here means that we have to go to the left one spot, and so it's 1.8. This makes sense as 1.8 and 1.8, 1 and 8 tenths plus 1 and 8 tenths, does give us 3 and 6 tenths. It is half of that. I'd like you to try a problem. Set this up. And solve. Hit pause. We start with 3 going into 4 one whole time. 1 times 3 is 3. 4 minus 3 is 1, and we bring down the 8. For our answer, we put a 6 there as well. And some students forget this step here. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 minus 18 is 0, so there's no remainder. At that point, since there is one decimal point within my answer, and I'm dividing by a whole number with no decimal points, then I count from right to left, one place because of this right here. So it's 1.6. 4 and 8 tenths divided by 3 is 1 and 6 tenths. Here I have 32.5 divided by 5. You'll notice here that I wrote this from left to right. Our divisor is still 5 here, and I can rewrite this as 32.5 as our dividend and 5 as our divisor. 5 cannot go into 3, but 5 can go into 32. 5 goes into 32 6 whole times, because 6 times 5 is 30. 32 minus 30 is 2, and I bring down the 5. 25 divided by 5 is 5, and 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 minus 25 is 0. Again, there's one decimal point here, and then so, going from right to left, one decimal place, right to left, one decimal point. And one decimal point, and one decimal place, that is. So 32.5 divided by 5 is 6.5. This makes sense, as I know the fact of 30 divided by 5, which is very close to 32, is already 6. 
So again, I can always think whether my answer is reasonable, whether I place that decimal point appropriately. Here I have a hundredths number divided by 3. So again, 3 is our divisor. We're dividing by a whole number. Since we're dividing by a whole number here, within our answer, we're going to end up having two decimal places. And so we'll see that when we have our quotient there. When we have our quotient, we've worked out our quotient. So to begin with again, just as before, you're just using that fact that you know of 453 divided by 3 and how you go about doing that. So you go step by step. 4 divided by 3 is 1. Because 1 times 3 is 3, 4 minus 3 is 1, we bring down the 5. 15 divided by 3 is 5, because 5 times 3 is 15, and 15 minus 15 is 0. Bring down the 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, because 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 minus 3 is 0. There are no more digits to bring down. All that's left is we have to place that decimal point. Where would you have placed it? And how is it that you would have read your answer? Did you place it there? Did you read your answer 1 and 51 hundredths? Let's read the whole problem. 4 and 53 hundredths divided by 3 is 1 and 51 hundredths. Don't believe me? We can kind of check it, right? Because we would be having 1 and 51 hundredths 3 times, or we could even go 1.51 times 3 for an exact check. 3, 5, 1, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4, 2 decimal places, 2 decimal places within our answer. Here's my repeated addition for my check as well. In other words, you do have a check for these division problems because you should know how to multiply decimals. It's your turn. Here are two problems for you to go ahead and solve. We have 2.17 divided by 7 and 4.60 divided by 4. Remember to place your decimal point appropriately. Hit pause. For the first problem, 7 cannot go into 2. 7 can go into 21, so we place a 3 here. 3 times 7 is 21, and 21 minus 21 is 0. Bring down the 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 1 times 7 is 7, and 7 minus 7 is 0. And then so we have two decimal points within our answer here. Because there are two decimal places within our dividend. For 0 0.31, we better place the 0 right there, because there are no holes there. You will notice that for now, since we're dealing with whole numbers... All we do is we bring that decimal point straight up. When we start dividing by decimals, that's when it is that the decimal point will actually have to move back in the other direction. And then so we'll talk about that as we are continuing to work with dividing by decimals. For the other one here, 4.60, 4 goes into 4 one whole time. 1 times 4 is 4, 4 minus 4 is 0, and we bring down the 6. 6 divided by 4 is 1, 1 times 4 is 4. And 6 minus 4 is 2. Bring down the 0. 20 divided by 4 is 5, because 5 times 4 is 20, and 20 minus 20 is 0. So there is no remainder there, and we don't have to extend our decimal out further. So for instance, 4.60 is actually equal to 4.600, and you can, have, you can continue your division to continue to extend out your decimal place values if you need to. Um, so in this case... We have two decimal places within our dividend, so we should have two decimal places within our answer because we are dividing by that whole number. So the answer there is 1.15. How would I check this problem here? The inverse operation of, multiplica of is multiplication, of division is multiplication, so I would go 1.15, my answer, and multiply it by what? Right, 4. And as you see here, it does work. 
work out a check for the other problem. Did you write 0 0.31 times 7? And did it work out? 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 3 is 21. Two decimal places. Two decimal places. Yep, it does. So again, this is a review. 3 and 54 hundredths. What we do, 8 can't go into 3. 8 can go into 35, so we place a 4. We ignore the decimal point to begin with. 4 times 8 is 32, and 35 minus 32 is 3, bringing down the 4. My next division step again is 34 divided by 8, which is 4, because 4 times 8 is 32. And this is what I was saying when I extended out my decimal. 3.54, it does equal, does equal 3.540. So at this point, I'm not going to write remainder 2. I can bring down the 0, and 20 divided by 8 is 2, because 2 times 8 is 16. And again, I have another one, 4. So I put another 0 here, so I can bring it down. 40 divided by 8 is 5, because 5 times 8 is 40, and 40 minus 40 is 0. Now there should still be, <laughs> look now, 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places with my answer. So I'm going to go ahead and count four decimal places here for within my answer. That was my dividend. And there are no decimal places here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so that's our answer. Again, so we're going to continue to work with dividing decimals. And so you'll see problems like this. And we'll also end up seeing problems where it is there's a decimal number that we're dividing by. And so I'll show you the approach that we're going to go ahead and use to solve those types of problems.